So you might have seen my last review on the Sony NX80. I told you that I was gonna show you some samples of what that camera can do, because I was gonna show you some footage from a wedding. Well, here it is. Stay right there, you're gonna wanna see this. So you guys may have already seen this video on my channel, uh, but what I'm gonna do right now is indicate in the video which shots are from the Sony NX80 so that you guys can actually see what this camera can do. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Turner, your friendly filmmaker, and today we're talking about the Sony NX80, again. Um, in my last review video, I was talking about the camera and my kind of first impressions of it uh, with using it so far, and in that video, I think you could kind of tell that I wasn't really too enthusiastic about it. Um, I wasn't really feeling like, eh, it was all that great. I felt like it was good, but eh. But now I actually use it at a wedding. And I have to say, after using it at a wedding, got my little notebook here about to blow away. After using it at a wedding, I was actually quite surprised. Um, I really did enjoy using it. Um, I found that it was very, very uh, easy to use. Uh, I feel the menu system that Sony has in its professional camcorders is actually pretty good. Everything's laid out in a way that makes sense, so it's easy to find things. Also, an observation about it is that you can access the menu while you're still recording and change various settings. Um, not all cameras do that. Uh, I mean, especially like DSLR mirrorless cameras, but uh, when you're using camcorders, not all camcorders will let you access the menu. Now, most professional camcorders do, but some of the prosumer slash professional ones kind of don't like right now I'm shooting this with the Canon XF400 and you cannot access the menu system when you're recording which is just kind of crazy to me because this is really a professional unit and can't do it but you could do it with Sony so that was pretty cool um, wind is blowing let me just pause for a second wind is whipping out here so I don't want to keep talking because you probably can't hear what the hell I'm saying that's why I got on this little furry thing to help with the the noise it's not it's not a gerbil or something like that so it's a mic and using it some of the things that i really liked and which are still the same as what i mentioned in the last video is just having that fixed lens with a pretty wide range of zooming uh, is really nice uh, not having to swap lenses is just a beautiful thing um, of course it's not the only camera i bring i do bring a fixed excuse me, uh, interchangeable lens camera with a bigger sensor so that in the case I'm facing some really, really crazy low light situations I can kind of swap out and be okay. But I, I much rather just use something with a fixed lens. It's just easier. Um, I found the image stabilization to be, the image stabilization to be very good. I found that the low light performance of it was actually pretty good uh, for being a one year sensor. Now, the thing was at that wedding, even though I was in a, a pretty dim lit room for the reception. I still use lights. So it's it's dim, but I light it up. So it's kind of hard to say if it was really, really good in low light. But from what I saw, it was, it was hanging with my JVC LS300, which has a way bigger sensor. And I was using a way faster lens. And it, to me, the image quality looked pretty much just as good, if not better. So sometimes when you're in dim situations and you're shooting neon lights, that intense light can sometimes really look bad when you're shooting. Um, with the JVC LS300, it like falls apart when you shoot really intense neon lights. And I showed an example of that in the review that I did if you want to check that video out. But I found the Sony didn't have that problem. It actually held the image very well and it still looked good. So I mean, overall, I was just very happy shooting with it. The image quality was really good. 
Um, the zooming capability was excellent. Um, you know, obviously the sounds, having a audio handle and audio controls right on the handle also always helps. The autofocus on it is just outstanding. I mean, although there are some functions of the autofocus that are a little confusing, it lets you really modify the autofocus to be whatever you want it to be. And that gets a little confusing, but other than that, it really works well. I like the fact that there's six customizable buttons. Uh, I was able to customize two of them to be zebras and peaking and turn those off and on as I was recording because sometimes just having those up on the screen at all times is kind of distracting. So I like to be able to turn those off and I could do that with the Sony. So that was great. Um, you know, some things that I don't like, like I think I mentioned before, the joystick, it's kind of in a weird position to control the menu. Uh, I wish they just kind of moved it to a different position, maybe on the monitor or something, but not a big deal. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I got used to it pretty quickly, so not crazy, not a crazy deal, not, not, nothing that was a deal breaker that made me feel like, oh, I can't use this camera. So that was good. Uh, let's see, I took some notes. I don't wanna leave anything out. And actually something that I thought that I might not like is the fact that when you open the screen, it just turns on automatically. Um, but I like that a lot because if I'm opening the screen, I'm opening the screen because I want the camera on. So the fact that it just turns on and it loads up very quickly and you're ready to shoot, uh, I really like that. So, yeah, that's a plus for the for the camera. I mean, o overall, man, I just think the NX80, if you're looking for something to shoot like documentary style type of films, live events, uh, something that's gonna be versatile, you know, give you the professional audio, something that's gonna give you a nice zoom range, uh, give you 4K if you need it, uh, image stabilization, uh, just, just everything. I mean, it really was a joy to shoot with. I think one of the only things that I don't like about it is how when you click on the iris, the shutter, or um, the iris, the shutter, or the DB on the camera, the ISO, uh, it goes into an auto mode, right, when you click it. So that's annoying. So like if you click it and then you adjust it with the dial and then you click it again, it goes into an auto mode. And that could sometimes mess you up because you accidentally do it and now the camera just does some wonky things with your exposure that happened to me a time or two. So it just gets, it just takes some getting used to, but all in all, it was a very good camera to use and I um, actually don't have it anymore. Uh, and I only returned it because I wanted to test out the Canon XF400 and I didn't have enough money in my budget to have both of them at the same time. So I didn't return it because I don't like it. I just returned it because I wanted to take that money and uh, try out the XF400 to see if I would like this one even more. So stay tuned to my channel because it's gonna be testing between the two cameras, just testing various things, you know, from the image stabilization to low light performance and just um, form and function. So look forward to those videos, subscribe if you haven't so you don't miss them. Um, and of course, anything that I talk about is always in the description below. If you click on any of those links, I will get a small commission. That costs you nothing extra, but it helps my channel. So I greatly appreciate it. Uh, and as always, I'm Mike Turner. Thanks for watching, and I guess I'll see you soon.